How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Crypto is doing really well today. Bitcoin's up 4% on the last 24 hours. A lot of altcoins are up much more than that. And we have some big news, some really good news coming out on uh, some important economic data. We have some background on what's happening in crypto and why the prices are continuously moving up. We also have some kind of groundbreaking news uh, or earth shattering ground shaking news uh, that's happening in the equities market which I want to talk about because this could change the game for a lot of investors so if you don't mind hitting the like button and subscribe button specifically underneath the video if you've seen videos like this before and you want to see more videos really appreciate that there are also links down there underneath the video in case you want to sign up for M1 Finance. That's the main brokerage account I use. I really like it. There's a link underneath the video where if you deposit $5,000, you and I can both get $100. I realize that's a lot for most people, but in case you want to try it out and you want to move an account over or you just want to start buying some more equities there, you can check out the link underneath the video. There's also a link down to the Patreon where you can see everything that I'm buying and selling. Now, Bitcoin is moving up to $20. $23,000. Just a few days ago, there were regulatory concerns that caused Bitcoin to go down under 22000 Now we got a subpar to bad CPI, and we got some retail sales data that came in today that could be thought of as a negative as well, but yet the market continues to move up. We're at $1.1 trillion, and Bitcoin's looking pretty strong, right under 23000 the equities market is kind of trying to figure itself out. But as you can see throughout the day, we have been moving up. It did open red on some, again, some retail sales data that we'll have to look at in a second. But as you can see throughout the day, equities have been moving up. Same thing with crypto. And then the VIX is down again on the last five days. It's down 6% in the last day. It's down 3.5%. Yesterday, it was down significantly as well, which is causing, I think, the market to move up a bit. Now, some of this might be because people are now pricing in that the Fed is less likely to raise by 50 basis points next meeting. As you can see, 91% probability of a 25 basis point hike as opposed to an 88%, so about a 3% shift, and more likelihood that will be around five to five and a quarter at the next rate hike after that. Part of that could be due to some of the Fed comments that we heard yesterday that I talked about on the channel. But we got some interesting news today that I think made a lot of people worried at first. But as I've said recently, uh, bad news used to be good news and good news used to be bad news. But now good news is starting to become good news again. And I'll explain why that is. But retail sales jump 3% in January, smashing expectations despite inflation increase. So retail sales rose 3%, topping the 1.9% Dow Jones estimate. Uh, the numbers are not adjusted for inflation, meaning that customers outpace the 0.5% inflation rate for the month. Now, food service and drinking places, motor vehicle and parts dealers and furniture stores led the sales increases. So at first glance, you might think, okay, this is going to tell the Fed that they are more likely to have to raise if retail sales are going up, inflation could continue. However, when we look the market is taking this as a good thing, obviously, throughout the day today. And last month, we actually saw retail sales fall 1.1% in December. So this was announced on the 18th. And on that day, the S&P 500 actually was down three quarters of a percent. And this is after it was down one and a half percent the day before. So the fact is the retail sales coming in strong should actually lead to a bounce in the market and we should pay attention to that from now on. But I think this is really showing that the Fed can get that soft landing that they're hoping for if the economy still stays strong and CPI continues to come down. That's what the market wants to see. We also got news from Wells Fargo that they say the bear market is over. Now they don't think that we're going to go into a bull market. They just think that we're going into a market. They say that mid-cap growth stocks show the best risk reward based on their research. Maybe companies such as Palantir. So pay attention to this. Maybe maybe they're right, but obviously no one knows what's going to happen with the market. But it is nice to see some big banks acting a little bit more bullish. Now, in the background of this 
crypto continues to innovate in this bear market and now maybe heading into a bull market uh, and the fundamentals continue to get stronger the supply change for ethereum since the merge that happened almost six months ago is negative 22.4 thousand now when we simulate what it would be like if we hadn't moved over to proof of stake they would be plus 3.5% year over year. So this is a massive change to the economics. And so far, Ethereum has saved about $3 billion worth of ETH, ETH that would have hit the market. Bitcoin also continues to get stronger and stronger with the hash rate hitting 300 exahash hash for the first time ever. In the background, innovators continue to build. Jack Mullers just announced that now developers can use strike api to send us dollars over the lightning network it's cheaper faster global superior payment experiences on the world's most open monetary network and this is great because a lot of people don't really want to have to deal with the volatility of bitcoin but they don't really understand that there is this other option where they can use the lightning network and jack talked about this or something similar to this a year ago, back in Bitcoin Miami, I was there and he was talking about instantly converting U.S. dollars to Bitcoin to send over the Lightning Network and then convert back to U.S. dollars with really no volatility in the price. So this is not using stable coins and it continues to gain more adoption. Uh, as it continues to gain more adoption, it will bring more eyeballs on Bitcoin and the possibility of Bitcoin as the next monetary network that we can use more and more. Interactive Brokers also launching Bitcoin and crypto trading in Hong Kong. Interactive Brokers is huge. Some of the biggest investors that I've met over the last few years use Interactive Brokers. So this is a big step and will continue to help investors get easier and easier access to crypto. And Will Clemente makes an important note on what's happening right now. Just a few days ago, remember, we were worried about regulation or some people were worried about regulation. I said, hey, if you're worried about it, Bitcoin is probably the way to go because it's going to be less regulated. It's less thought of as a security and it's just safer on the regulatory front. Will says Bitcoin's relative strength, especially shrugging off these regulatory headlines so far, speaks volumes. He says this is basically what's happening. When news impacts the price, market participants often fixate, fixate on whether it's true or not true. More often than not, the actual veracity of the headline is immaterial. It's how the market reacts to the news and for how long that turns out to be more informative. So instead of worrying about some piece of news that's coming out and what it means for crypto, look at how the market reacts. Is it really fearful of the news? Is it not fearful of the news? Of course, there are arbitrage plays where there might be news that comes out that causes the price to fall down drastically, but it won't really matter in the long term. But you can kind of get a gauge for how bad news is based on the price action. If you fall down because some people sell off right away and then we come right back up, well, then it's probably not that big of a deal. And this may be pointing out the regulation that we've seen recently, maybe not being that important. And we're seeing more and more money flow into crypto, which is probably a good sign as well. Abu Dhabi launches a $2 billion fund to accelerate the growth of Web3 startups. Now, as always, we do have to be a little bit cautious. We still have to remain cautious. Apparently, Binance paused USDC withdrawals on ETH chain due to a temporary shortage, and the last withdrawal was processed uh, nine hours ago. This is a little bit old now, so it's probably fixed. I also heard some people trying to get some of their crypto off of Gemini and having an issue, and I'm, I can't substantiate that, but I would just be careful. If you have crypto on exchanges, now is probably a good time to take it off. There are links underneath the video to Treasure where you can store your own crypto, and then you don't have to be worried about this. Now, I do want to switch roles over to equities for a moment because there was a big game changer that happened just today and we'll come back to crypto at the end but there's been some big news tesla is now going to open some of their ev charging stations to other vehicles keep in mind they have a massive fleet they are talking about letting 3500 uh, of these different tesla charging stations uh, be converted so that they can also have uh, other electric vehicles and it will probably be a lot of new charging stations but now they're going to benefit in a variety of ways and gary black kind of points this out they are going to have walls of tesla advertising they're going to have a great charging experience many teslas with satisfied owners around probably other owners that aren't so satisfied with their evs non-tesla owners will have to download the tesla app to charge 
they're going to get incremental revenues from people using their electric and they have now turned POTUS from a critic to a supporter and they're also going to get regulatory credits to set this up. Now, I realize some people might be worried because they think one of Tesla's largest moats is the supercharging network. But you have to remember, Tesla has said that their main goal is to accelerate the adaptation of sustainable energy. So with that in mind, it makes sense that they would try to offer their network to other, uh, other competitors, especially when they aren't really competing too much. Tesla is so far ahead in terms of uh, price and their pricing power that they can still beat out the other electric vehicle makers without having to worry about holding their superchargers. They're really trying to, again, bring more and more people over to sustainable energy. <clears throat> and like Gary Black says here, there's still a ton of benefits from allowing other car manufacturers to use their uh, charging network. They can make more revenue. They can get tax incentives. There aren't going to be that many vehicles probably at first anyways that even use their chargers. And it's not like they have to go and open up all their network. Now, the plan is for Tesla to have 7,500 chargers by the end of 2024 that can be used with other electric vehicles. Keep in mind, this might be a huge selling point because right now they have 42.5 thousand supercharger connectors and they're trying to double this in the next few years. So they're going to have 90,000 charging stations, but only one out of every 10 will be for these other electric vehicles. Now, even if you think a lot of these are in the U.S. versus uh, international, because that is something that will happen, uh, let's say just even one out of every three in the U.S. are available to all um, vehicles to charge. You have to realize that a lot of people will be frustrated because they will see an open charging station or they'll, they'll see it on the way home, but they won't be able to stop because they don't have a Tesla and that one doesn't allow uh, other electric vehicle makers to charge there. Uh, they might be on a long road trip and have to go way out of their way and think, why didn't I just get a Tesla so I don't have to deal with this? So I think that will be another huge selling point is because Tesla is offering it. It might actually cause other vehicle manufacturers to try to make less charging stations than they would otherwise. And then Tesla will really have a bottleneck and it'll be so much easier just to have a Tesla. Keep in mind, Tesla does have a lot of catalysts, and I've been ringing the bell on Tesla for a year plus, but especially over the last month where they have been beaten down so much or the last few months, and I've been buying a lot. Investor Day is coming up on 3-1. They have their $7,500 EV credit uh, for the first quarter uh, that will see how many vehicles they actually can sell because of that. A lot of people think they're going to have 450,000 plus vehicles, full self-driving V11 beta single stack in the first quarter. Mega pack revenues are going to increase in the first quarter. Tesla possibly giving a buyback announcement here soon. Twitter CEO announcement possibly in the second half of the year. Cybertruck mid 2023, a 20 to $30,000 compact in next year, at some point next year. And keep in mind, some areas you can actually get a Model 3 for under $30,000. I think it's $27,000 in certain states. And now Gary Black's giving a $370 price target in the next 6 to 12 months on Tesla, which is obviously 80% up or so from where it is now. So pay attention to Tesla. Huge announcement coming about these chargers here today. I think they'll make a lot of money from this. They'll bring more people into the Tesla ecosystem. And while some people think this might be a bad thing for Tesla, I think over the long term, this will actually be a huge benefit to them because they get so much advertising out of this. Now, again, crypto is looking really good. We could always fall down from here. So be cautious. As you know, or might know, I made a video last week talking about what I was buying, why I was buying a little bit more for the first time in a while when we started to see a little bit of softness on Bitcoin. I do think this was bullish to pull back for a little while. Now we've reset the RSI to about the same level that it was when we were around uh, $17,500. So this is really good. We're at a 60 RSI on the daily, still pretty high, still a little bit overbought, but it definitely cooled down, which I think is really good. We also held 21.5 or 21.4 as support. And I think this is really bullish for crypto. Now, of course, it's going to depend on macro a lot, but 
a lot of cryptos probably will start moving up now, uh, even with some regulatory uncertainty with staking going under attack. So we may see some big pullbacks and depending on what happens with CPI and the Fed, who knows what's going to happen. But I am quite bullish on risk assets right now, which is why I've been adding so much over the last six months or so. Let me know your thoughts on this underneath the video though. Again, check out the links if you want to know why I'm buying and selling and check out that link to M1 Finance if you want to start investing there. If you want to put your uh, crypto on cold storage, check out the links to Treasure. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts on Tesla and on crypto and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.